On 23rd September 2019, the world received a blow on its face when Greta Thunberg raised her voice, looked dead in the eye, and asked us, "People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing." We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you! Her words created a massive impact across the globe. 7.6 million people joined the strike against global climate change, the greatest climate mobilization in all of history. And it was the first time when most of us realized that global climate change is our reality, and we are in a state of emergency. My name is Pratyush, and you are watching Mindbook Media. So in this video, we're going to talk about global climate change and how can we fight against global climate change. However, in this video, I'm not going to give you any solutions to this problem. However, we're going to dig deep and find the root cause of global climate change. So that once we understand the root cause of a problem, we can arrive at a solution for it. We all know that one of the major causes of global climate change is the emission of greenhouse gases. However, there is more to the story. In order to truly understand what causes global climate change, we need to understand the difference between green carbon and fossil carbon. So, what is green carbon? So, in the very simple manner, we can say that. Green carbon is the carbon that is supposed to be here. In fact, Earth has always had carbon in its atmosphere. Without carbon in its atmosphere, Earth would be a cold, lifeless planet. Since we have a blanket of carbon and the greenhouse effect, it keeps our Earth warm and fuzzy. In fact, Earth has a natural carbon cycle. Now we know that that plants take in carbon dioxide and gives out oxygen. Now animals eat these plants. and big animals eat these animals and it goes up the food chain until eventually when one of the animals doesn't get eaten it dies decomposes and the carbon is returned to the atmosphere so you see this forms a closed loop and this is known as the natural carbon cycle hence in simple words i can say that green carbon doesn't cause global climate change because green carbon is our climate so then what causes global climate change well the answer to that is fossil carbon fossil carbon causes global climate change now in order to truly understand what fossil carbon is we'll have to get into a time machine and travel way back into the late jurassic period so now that we are in the land of the dinosaurs we can see that the earth's temperature is very high and earth has over 7 times the amount of carbon than we have right now the carbon cycle is still active by the way so plants are taking the carbon dioxide animals are eating these plants big animals are eating these animals and up the food chain and eventually one of the animal doesn't get eaten it dies decomposes and the carbon is returned to the atmosphere and hence the carbon cycle is completed this is the way how it is supposed to happen but there was a problem the problem was that in the late jurassic period earth was filled with shallow water bodies but that's not the problem the problem was that there was algae formation and the one problem with algae is that it sucks all the oxygen that is present in these water bodies Hence many oxygen deficient zones were formed all over the planet. So now when a plant or an animal died and fell into one of these water bodies, it didn't get decomposed because for decomposition to happen you need oxygen. So it was partially decomposed and this partially decomposed matter settled to the bottom and after millions of years of heat and pressure, this partially decomposed matter got converted into the fossil fuel we know right now. Now in the late Jurassic period there was less amount of carbon in the atmosphere and the carbon cycle had to adapt so nature adapts itself as we say so the carbon cycle corrected itself and it started going around with less amount of carbon so now the temperature came down and finally human beings were able to survive so now in the present time when our carbon cycle is going around with less amount of carbon we are releasing the fossil carbon or the carbon from the late Jurassic period into the atmosphere now as i have said our carbon cycle is a closed loop So this fossil carbon is not able to participate in our natural carbon cycle and hence it stays in our atmosphere and this causes our global climate change. But don't worry the fossil carbon also will join our normal carbon cycle and it will adjust itself and it will come to an equilibrium. But in the meanwhile humanity is screwed. 
Now since we have understood the difference between green carbon and fossil carbon, there is one important parameter that all of us should be aware of and that is carbon footprint. Now what is carbon footprint? So carbon footprint is basically the amount of carbon dioxide that is released into the atmosphere as part of an activity directly or indirectly. So every human being, every object, every activity has a carbon footprint. Now in order for you to understand this concept properly, I'll take the example of this pen. Now let's take the example of this pen. This pen has a carbon footprint. Now I'll explain how you how. This pen might have been manufactured in a factory. So that factory might have released a lot of carbon in that process. So that is a carbon footprint of this pen. You might have taken your vehicle and to go and buy this pen. So again, carbon was emitted in that process. So that also is the carbon footprint of this pen. Now that factory and that bike has a separate carbon footprint on its own. For example, that factory has a carbon footprint because the workers who are working there might have used their vehicles to come to that factory. So again, the carbon emitted while traveling also adds to the carbon footprint of that factory. Now, the electricity that's used by that factory also has a carbon footprint. Now, this is interesting because electricity in India, we think that most of it's, it is coming from sustainable sources. However, it's not. That's the reality. You know, about 65% of India's total electricity is produced from thermal sources. And in that 65%, around 85% is coal generated. So now do you see every activity is emitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere directly or indirectly. So we as a consumer, we as a consumer, when we buy a product and when we do an activity, we knowingly or unknowingly emit a lot of carbon into the atmosphere. Now in order for you to see the bigger picture, I'll give you a small example. Now since I'm in Bangalore, I'll give you the example of Bangalore itself. In Bangalore, a total of 80 lakh vehicles have been registered in which around 52 lakh are two-wheelers and around 14 lakh are cars. Now, an estimate, an average of 1,754 vehicles are registered every single day. Now, do you know one liter of diesel can emit 2.6 kg of CO2 into the atmosphere and one liter of petrol can emit a total of 2.3 kg of CO2 into the atmosphere. Now, you can do the math and see the bigger picture. Now, you see this is called the carbon footprint of consumption. So as a consumer, when we buy a product, a lot of carbon is associated with that product. So if you ask me, how do you beat climate change or how do you fight against climate change? I'll tell you, be a responsible consumer. You know, when there is a, when there is a demand, there is a supply. So when you choose a product with a lower carbon footprint, you immediately cut down the amount of carbon emission that is going on. Now you might ask me, how do you do it? So just for an example, if you think, if you use a private vehicle every single day, what will happen if you use a public vehicle? The carbon footprint was cut down in your daily activity. Just one day in your entire week, you could do an activity or reduce consumption of a product that has a higher carbon footprint. For example, you might have heard people say that don't eat red meat. Now the reason for that is cows, cows produce a lot of methane. Now methane has almost 26 times the amount of heat trapping capacity than CO2. So, if you think it in a scientific manner, you can say that red meat has a higher carbon footprint. So when you choose a product that has a lower carbon footprint, you're immediately cutting down the carbon emission. So this is the only practical way how you can fight climate change. Guys, there is a magic machine that can help us in fighting global climate change. Now this magic machine requires a zero investment and zero maintenance. Now this magic machine absorbs carbon dioxide and gives out oxygen. Yes, I'm talking about a tree. Every single tree that we plant makes a difference. Now I know our generation is the very first generation to feel the immediate effects of global climate change. But we have to accept it. This is our reality. But we can fight against it. Now it just takes one person to make that change and you can be that change. Be the change that you want to see in others. And let's fight climate change together.